So we'll go to the next one, is the hip and pelvis. So the hip, basically when you talk about hip, you need to know all this area. So you've got the lumbosacral region, you've got SI joint, sacrum, coccyx, iliac bone, the whole thing, the pelvis, and then the femora. So looking at the uh, sacrum, you have got the sacrum, you have got the body of the sacrum, these are the sacral foramina, and then this is the sacral ala. This is very important because most of the weight is transmitted from here, goes into this and goes onto the fibula and down into your feet. Looking at the SI joint first, you look at the SI joint, you have got the sacral side and you have got the iliac side. The pathologies are different for involvement of the sacrum and uh, involvement of the SI joint, uh, the iliac side of the joint. I won't go into detail of those. But as a group, it will be SI joint pathology. It may be degenerative, which may be secondary due to angst or any other inflammatory process. So when you are talking about the iliac bone, so this is the body of the iliac, ileum. You've got the iliac crest, the medial side and the lateral side. As you come along, if you run your uh, finger through the anterior most process is the anterior superior iliac spine. You've got a notch there and then as you come down you've got the anterior superior iliac spine. So that's the iliac crest, that's the iliac superior iliac spine and as you go down slightly you get the anterior inferior iliac spine and that's the posterior so that's the posterior superior, posterior inferior and ischial spine. This is the acetabulum, body of the acetabulum, and it runs into the anterior and posterior, forms the ischium, the tubercle of the ischium, and the body of the ischium. Anteriorly, it goes into inferior pubic ramus. The acetabulum comes down and forms the superior pubic ramus. Joins into the body of the pubis and forms the symphysis on the other side. Symphysis is the cartilaginous joint has got a, a cartilage in between and you can get degenerative changes, inflammation and during pregnancy this becomes lax and it separates the space for the delivery. Coming now to the, and this forms the obturator foramen, obturator nerves and obturator vessels goes through those. So looking at the hip, you have got the cartilage running through, you have got the acetabulum, you have got the anterior superior process of the acetabulum, inferior process and you have got the posterior process which is posteriorly. This is the roof of the acetabulum if you want to describe it and that's the femoral head, acetabulum labrum. You don't see it on CT, so you don't need to describe, you just need to say this is the acetabulum, this is the roof or the anterior process. And you've got a ligament, that's fovea centralis, which is attached within the uh, head of the uh, femur. This ridge is the intertrochanteric, you've got uh, lesser trochanter, greater trochanter, and you have got a bursa sitting here and sometimes and most of the time if you see a bone scan planar images you see lateral uptake within the uh, hip joint laterally and you say it's suggestive of. So that's the word you use suggestive of because you are suggesting that this is a region most likely on planar imaging and it is likely to be a bursitis. Uh, neck is important because you can have impacted fracture and then bone scan and MRI is the most sensitive and that can help because the patient will have impacted fracture, they will be walking around with pain, they will be mobilizing even though there is a fracture but the pain is ongoing and they have had x-rays and they have been excluded as you know not having a fracture 
and they continue to have uh, pain and then they end up in A&E again and they then are referred for a bone scan which is cheaper and easily yeah. available rather than MRI because it has got long waiting lists. Uh, I think that is what I can tell you. So that's basically the ligamentous uh, insertion, hip joint. Again, I've already told you. This is a very important line. If you are looking at it on pain film and on CT, iliopectineal line, this is the first thing you look at if you're looking at a plain film and if you are looking at a bone scan and you want to say whether this is Paget's disease or not. This line is the first thing which becomes thickened. So this is a very important landmark and if you don't have uh, any other imaging, you have got bone scan and you're not sure, it's not typical and then you have got a plain film, so you look at the plain film and look at this line and it becomes thickened. The trabeculae on the uh, x-rays or on CT becomes coarse, thickened, prominent, widening of the canal and these are the typical features of uh, pagets. As Gopi said, it depends on what phase of the uh, pagets is, acute or chronic, so it can be normal or abnormal on bone scan. So nothing different, similar. So you've got uh, tuberosity there. So this is important when you see on the bone scan, as Koki said in the last uh, lectures, you see the cortex here, you see on the CT and on plain films, the smooth cortical outline, so there is no problem. So if you see uptake in such cases here and you've got pain film, you can say it's uh, likely to represent metastatic disease because the cortex is still intact and there is no uh, changes surrounding here because it would reflect if there is anthesopathy and these are the insertion site of semimembranosus and other muscles, posterior muscles. So they, you will see irregularity, like you see irregularity here. So there is some uh, osteitis here because you have lost, look at this side, it's nice. Here you see sclerosis and irregularity, so there are some changes there. Here you don't see any changes, so it's less likely to see uptake there, so it's likely. And it reflects maybe there is metastasis if there is history of primary malignancy. Again, similar. So this is ligament of teres. So this can get disruptive and you can have dislocation. You need to know the attachments of how the synovium is attached. Capsule is inside, synovium attaches outside. So if you do a three-phase bone scan, you see information around this rather than within the joint, then you can, and at times I do put in my report, the findings uh, suggestive of synovitis. You see it more often in a knee joint post prosthesis because they are very typical appearance. I don't know whether I've got slides. I can see if we, uh, tomorrow uh, we can go through. So you need to know the pattern of uptake. So if you see some focal uptake in the head and acetabulum, you can say it's bony. But if you see diffuse uptake and three-phase bone scan, then you can suggest that this is synovitis. And then they can go ahead and do a ultrasound and then look at it. Uh, with the ultrasound to look at the synovial thickening, vascularity and fluid and if needed they can put a needle in and they can biopsy. We'll talk about knee joint later but again it's other this presentation of what it is, trochanter, intertrochanteric line, lesser trochanter, you can get revulsion injuries here, here because these are attachments of the muscles and if I go back so you have got avulsion injuries here, avulsion injuries here, here, and lesser trochanter. So if you see some uptake here, correspond with that, so you can say they could reflect avulsion injuries. So these are the muscles which are attached. You've got booty if you're doing a spec CT or you're doing a PET, you need to know your muscles. So these are the glutei, glutei, gluteus majors, 
This is the same attachment, which is me just sitting inside, which is Menemus inside within the fossa. The reformus is basically coming from the anterior side, which is butting the uh, sacrum. So it comes along from here, goes through this fossa, and then goes and attach over the superior part of the tuberosity. So these are small, these are insignificant muscles. And then you have got quadriceps, if you are looking, this is the posterior, so you have got semimembranosus and extensor muscles at the back. Anteriorly, you have got vastus, uh, medialis, lateralis, and intermedius. So you have got vastus, and then they go down, and uh, basically they form a reticulum at the inferior margin and attaches to the patella. And you can have injury, evolving injuries. So these are the anterior projections. So you've got the capsule there, you've got bursa there. So you've got iliosuas coming from iliacus. Uh, this is the psoas coming from the abdomen down, joins with the iliacus, form a tendon, and goes and inserts around the inferior part of the tuberosity overlying the lesser trochanter. These are important when you're looking at spec, when you start reporting spec. So you see uptake there, so you need to look at whether these are evulsion injuries or this is because of bursa or it's just inflammation. So looking at this now, you've got bursa, you've got trochanteric bursa, so you need to know where the location is. You've got, this is posteriorly, if you look from the behind, is posteriorly projected just below the intertrochanteric line and if you've got uptake posteriorly and it's just butting the bone so it will be uh, gluteus medius versa and then if you're looking at the muscle the, you've got the psoas coming iliacus coming origin from the hair and it comes down and then it attaches there you've got a bursa there and this is the ischium and you've got the tuberosity there and there is bursa which is just sitting next to the origin of the muscles but it's just basically common anatomy which you need to know you need to know that it's not only bone you're looking at you're looking at the soft tissue you're looking at the tendons you're looking at the where the tendons are inserted there is a cushion is by nature this is what god has provided as a perfect uh, body where everything has been cushioned everything has got uh, objective behind it is not by default so uh, you need to remember so you need to remember that there are nerves there are muscles there are sheets synovium capsule you've got bursae and uh, you've got bone and when you're reporting you need to think all about these uh, entities so that's what I said this is uh, rectus femoris coming down these are the vastus they come from a sheath and this is the superior patella ligament and this is the tendon which attaches so if you are athlete and you're doing exercise especially the extension of the knee forceful extension of the knee you can have avulsion injuries and that patella can be hot on bone scan So now coming back to the pathology, if you look at this, what do you think it is? Hmm? Sorry? No. So you've got sclerotic margin, you've got loss of cartilage, you have got low density area, you've got sclerosis, and you've got some changes osteophytosis there, osteophytes when they become solid they are called osteophytosis. So this is a, a degenerative changes involving the joint. So this is progression now, you've got, now you need to talk about loss of joint space. You've got subchondral spherosis, so you've got the cartilage, the cartilage is lo lost, is irregular. So you see there is exposure of the uh, head and then you've got low densities with margins, uh, sclerosis. So you, this patient is developing subchondral cysts. Again, there is, it should be 
a well convex so you're getting flattening so it's more advanced this is more advanced there is impinging there it should be like covering most of the articular surface here is exposed so you see the sclerosis there you see the irregularity there flattening of the head sclerosis reduction in the joint space and these are the changes of arthritis and if you see on the bone scan it will be hot so again you see on CT well-defined sclerotic margin low density central area so on this you you don't know what it is so you go down so it forms a further larger cyst further largest and it joins in with the space so as I told you earlier that you've got the synovium which goes into the bone erodes through the cortex and goes into the uh, medulla and it becomes uh, completely capsized and becomes a uh, well-defined cystic uh, area. If you're talking about the head of the uh, bone like uh, humerus or uh, femur or metatarsals then they become encased within the medullary cavity and they are called subchondral cysts or geoids. So if you look at it here, you've got, if I just show you this, then you may say, oh, this could be a sclerotic lesion. But if you go on, you see this and you lost this. So this is arthritis. Again, it depends. Uh, yes, so if you see, you see, when you're looking at arthritis, it will involve both sides of the joint. Infection, two things, the arthritis and the, uh, it starts with one side and it eventually involves both sides. And it depends how big area is involved and how advanced the disease is. The big cyst forms at a later stage. If you see in the early stages, they are small cysts. And the path of physiology of uh, pathogenesis or the disease evolution is uh, basically based on how you uh, look at it. You've got a joint, uh, if it is infection, it cannot be, it is not predisposing only one side of the joint. It has to involve both sides because the inflammation is within the cavity and there is migration on both sides. So you have to have changes on both sides of the bone. How will you differentiate between the arthritis and infection? There will be marked destruction of the bone in infection and then very selective. You see, you have got still articular surface maintained. You've got few encroachment of the cysts here, but then the cortex still intact. There is no edema. There is no edema. There is fat planes up maintained. So that's the beauty of the CT. Yeah? You see the outlines of these muscles and the interface between the fats are maintained. If you see a infection, there will be fluid encroaching into the synovial cavity. Here, this, uh, there will be loss of planes between these interface. What do you think this is? Just describe what it is, what you see. It's a child, first of all, because the there is still uh, epiphysis not fused. So again, look at the bone. So you look at the femur, you've got the head, that's the head, that's the physis, that's the trochanter outline is maintained. It's quick, so just go through. And then you come down here, you see something here. That's not right. You see here, everything is pristine. So there is some irregularity. So what area is this? Ischium. So it's ischium and there's you've got this erosion. So you now you've got two things. Either this is evulsion, so muscle has uh, taken off or is anthropathy. Yeah? And this is what you can say. Now looking at the now SI joint again, you've got changes in the SI joint. It could be 
superior or it could be inferior majority of the time is the inferior t uh, if you're looking at the uh, spec ct most of the time you'll see some sclerosis loss of joint space destruction cyst formation like this and uh, sclerosis this is marked so now what i was saying to you earlier that it can be the sacrum site ix site and it could be both but still you've got joint space you've got some uh, air in between the joint vacuum phenomena and you've got uptake significant uh, sclerosis on the uh, IVX side. So normally if you see this on the IVX side is uh, uh, sacroiliitis, not ileitis, it's, uh, uh, there's a terminology for this and it's just gone off my head. And it's normally in females, and it involves the inferior part uh, of the SI joint, and normally involves the uh, iliac side of the sac uh, uh, sacroiliac joint. Yes, condensed ilia. Thank you very much. So that's very typical. Now, if you look at this, there is marked sclerosis. Any suggestions? So what bone is involved and what do you see? Sacrum. And it's both sides. The arrows reflect there are things happening on both sides. And what is the typical appearance? Yes, it's a bi bilateral sacral fracture, osteoporotic. Very typical, you see this so what I said, look at the cortex. If it is breached, then it means it's a fracture. Look at this side and look at this. So there is a dimple there. And here it's completely disrupted. And then you see this outline. And if you follow on CT, you see a line which is going through. Sometimes you only see disruption in one cortex. But it should go all the way up to the ella of the sacrum. And this is what you see on your bone scan as Honda sign. Yeah. So again, you see this line here, it's not a good image, so it goes through and it goes through and these are most commonly seen in osteoporotic fractures. There are typical uh, sites where you see uh, osteoporotic fractures, this is one most common and then the other most common site is the uh, neck of the femur medially. This is what you see. I just copied, I didn't have it, so I just copied it yesterday night from the internet. Pubis, look at it, again the same definition applies to all joints, all bones, wherever it is. You've got loss of joint space, if I show you... So you've got this and this so you've got space there but here you've lost space and then you've got cyst formation there and you've got sclerosis so it's only one side and this could be osteitis pubis so it could be inflammation the pain is there and it's been painful and they don't know what it is so they do the x-ray they can't find it sometimes early and then they do a bone scan and you can see up there without any morpho morphological changes on uh, pain film or CT. This is nice picture, so basically it involves both sides, sclerosis, and it's basically causing symptoms. Should not have put this, so... <laughs> so if you look at the first one and look at this one, you've got cyst formation with sclerosis, flattening again but we still the cortex is intact and you got changes in the arising from the subchondral margin and then you've got spirosis there and I know it's very difficult sometimes you are caught up you don't have but you don't have much changes on the other side and it's only one side thank you